trying, trying to understand, understand the minds, minds of regressive, regressive leftists, leftists and, and social, social justice, justice warriors. warriors. This is one in a series of videos in which we attempt to fathom, fathom the, the depths, depths, the inscrutable darkness, darkness as, as it were, the very abyss itself that, that is the minds of social justice warriors, often abbreviated SJWs, and other regressive leftists. Note, the visual element of this video will not necessarily pertain to what is being said. All or most of what is shown on the screen will just be videos that I've taken of nature or whatever. So you can just listen to it if you want. Breaking up with my friend. This is the third video about our regressive left friend. You don't need to see or listen to the first two videos in this mini-series, but we do suggest it, so see the links below. The point of this video is an attempt to understand the minds of regressive leftists by trying to understand the mind of a particular regressive left friend. So if it seems like I'm presuming that you, strangers out there, should give a crap about my own personal life, remember that I'm only describing personal stuff in an attempt to understand a social phenomenon. Some of the following may be redundant if you've seen those first two videos about this particular friend, but bear with us. I'll even add some stuff that I don't think I've mentioned before. To summarize, I had a friend with whom I shared a lot in common, past tense now. She and I, we like the same literature, the same sort of independent films, the same art, the same culture, well, subculture, or subcultures actually, the same music, and I, I like a lot of really underground stuff and just obscure stuff, and it, no matter what it was, if I named it, she knew it, she had a copy of it, or she could sing it, and it was a bit like uh, that part in the movie Step Brothers, where they're just discovering that they like the same stuff, and they're like, What? Did we just become best friends? Yep! <laughs> it was a bit like that, it was kind of cool. We would go on hikes together, we'd go to the goth clubs together, flirt with and try to fool around with the same women, which we failed at almost every single time. Not every time. <laughs> and the reason why I bring that sex stuff up is, uh, well, Tabby already brought it up anyway, so why not? Um, but you'll hear that in the next video. It's something we recorded earlier, but you'll hear that in the next video. Well, here's a tiny little preview. Apparently I'm white trash now. Well, you 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 weren't so, you know, squeamish about trying to get into my white trash panties, now were ya? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's enough of the preview, but yeah, that's in the next video, so see that. Make sure you subscribe to us. But anyway, the reason why I bring up this sex stuff now, the point is to contrast how close we were physically, emotionally, and intellectually with how distant we've become since. And a lot of that has to do with this splitting of the left that you can see in graphs like this, which we'll get into. I was saying about my friend that uh, we like a lot of the same stuff and what else. Uh, we also shared the same sort of social views, though neither of us were really political people. We didn't really follow politics closely. We're both anti-authoritarian personality types. We're both for equal rights. We're both against racism, both against sexism, or so I thought but I'm getting ahead of myself, let me back up. Anyway, I had my girlfriends, she had her boyfriends, and sometimes her girlfriends. We would party together, we act like college kids, even though we were considerably older, and all was good, except when it came to Islam. When I criticize aspects of Christianity, such as the sexism, or the stuff about slaughtering tribes for the Lord, or taking the daughters home for sex slaves, and so on, she would enthusiastically agree. But when I made similar criticisms, or the same criticisms about Islam, she did that typical predictable NPC thing. You know, Islamophobia, hashtag not all Muslims, even if you don't mention Muslims at all, you just quote about the Quran, or something like that. You know, the tired old script of the regressive left. But anyway, we always compartmentalize that aspect of our lives uh, with that which we disagreed on. We kind of just would have it out and then we just drop it and then everything would go back to fun and games again. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but we became roommates. The party continued a lot. <laughs> interfering with my college studies, but but anyway, I met Tabitha, and my friend got herself a boyfriend, but not before she and I had a little threesome with Tabitha, which I guess Tabitha doesn't regret, but which I guess I enjoyed more than Tabitha enjoyed, but I'll let Tabitha tell you about that later. But anyway, soon after, the four of us became housemates. We had a great time. We kind of lived like, uh, well, like college doormates, like I said earlier. We were comfortable enough with each other so that, well... <laughs> There have been times where our female friend there, where she was in the room as Tabby and I were having sex, and uh, I rather enjoyed that. 
we were comfortable enough with each other so that we could just sort of walk around in our underwear or less. Anyway, eventually Tabitha and I, we had to move to a different state for personal reasons that are just not important. I don't want to bore you and whatever, but it was around that time that the left polarized, at least to us anyway. And I became more interested in what we now call the regressive left. The left that has gone so far to the left that they are against classical liberal principles of freedom and equality or even so far out that they are hardly distinguishable from the far right. So that's around the time when I started making, you know, seriously making videos rather than just a couple of year or just when I felt like it or between semesters I started, you know, making them making a more concerted effort to make, the, to make these videos. Now you may have seen this article by The Economist and this chart in The Economist that sort of shows you how over the years on the left things have become more and more polarized. Not just, I'm not talking about polarization between left and right, but polarization between moderate left and far left. And you can see the wave is sort of moving further and further to the left predominantly while there's still a significant chunk of that wave being more to the moderate side of the left. Now, of course, this is displayed along a one-dimensional line. It's just left versus right is how they map this thing out. But I bet if it were mapped out to a two-dimensional political map or the political compass, I would bet that a lot of the polarization on the left is between the authoritarian left and the libertarian left. Or to put it in different terms, the regressive left and the classical liberals. By the way, I made this political map right here to show the tendency of uh, how one, when one goes far enough to the left or to the right, one tends to take either the path towards authoritarianism slash collectivism or towards libertarianism slash individualism, and that the further one goes along these paths on the left or the right, the closer the left and the right become until they are indeed one. For example, the reason why people argue if the ultra-authoritarian collectivist systems like Nazism and fascism and communism are left or right is because when you get to that level of extremity, the differences between left and right become meaningless. And the same applies when one goes far enough along the left or right libertarian slash individualist paths. So the differences between left and right are either meaningless or just non-existent. Anyway, this friend or ex-friend went along with that wave that you could see rolling further and further left along with many other people, as you may have noticed. And as she did, like many other people, she viewed classical liberals who were not moving as going further and further right. Because from the perspective of these people, you know, if they're leaving an island, it does seem like the island is moving away from them. Although they should realize that the island's not moving that they are, but that's sort of how that thing works there. It's that slide of mind defense mechanism that Tabitha and I mentioned in the early, in the last video about this. As regressive leftists like her increasingly call moderates, centrists, and classical liberals and other non-regressive left-wingers right-wing or alt-right, or in some cases they're going to the extreme saying Nazi and fascist and white supremacist and so on, as this phenomenon in society got worse and worse, our ex-friend here beat around the bush more and more, never really calling me a white supremacist or tabby a white supremacist or a fascist or a Nazi, but saying things like we're kind of encouraging them or our ideas are like gateways to those you know gateway drugs to those things my posts and my youtube videos might encourage or enable or normalize nazism or fascists and etc yada 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 you know folks so you, you if if you're familiar enough with this stuff you it's so predictable it's as if it's a it's a bot but this is a real person we live with this girl we share this girl's body and intimately we cried with her we held her and cried together and laughed and etc. We went through dark times, we went through good times. It's a real flesh and blood person, not a bot, I can tell you that. Anyway, so I very much want to understand the minds of regressive leftists and social justice warriors, but they have a very strong tendency to hide their motivations and their thought patterns from themselves and others. But for a long time now, I would say about two years or so, I have consciously tried very gingerly, very gently to coax our friend ex friend whatever, into revealing her motivations and her thought patterns because, I hypothesized, if I can get her to be honest about these things, I could better understand the regressive leftists in general. Two years, mind you, roughly two years, just trying very gently, very gently. But my attempts have not been very successful. 
and lately she has become scornful and hateful towards me, as well as towards Tabitha, and she increasingly insults, mocks, and heckles me. We'll get into sort of like using her boyfriend's account to heckle me from other platforms. <laughs> we'll get into that later. And she is devolved to the point where she's become like that, you know, like the typical one drunk at the club who has to be kicked out because he or she is being a belligerent asshole and just trying to pick fights with everyone. She's become like that. At least insofar as she deals with me. I would imagine that she's not always like that at all, but she's she sort of picks at me and just jabs and picks and gets worse and worse and worse until she's just flailing, you know. You know how that goes with that one person who's just, they, they want to have a fight before the end of the night is through. And nobody else will fight with them, so they're just going to look for somebody that they can go after. Shortly after I started the series, she flat out told me that she thinks that Jordan Peterson should be censored. You don't have to know who Jordan Peterson is. The principle is that she says that a person should be censored. She didn't really know who Jordan Peterson is, but she knew that her friends told her that he should be censored because he's a bigot, transphobic, blah blah blah. You know, the whole routine, the whole thing. They believe it because the media told them so, and there you go. Well, first activists said so, then the media repeated what the activists said as if angry mobs really know what they're talking about. And, uh, well, Jordan Peterson has a career now of just basically proving everyone wrong over and over and over again. Anyway, our friend agreed with her friends that Jordan Peterson, whoever he is, should be censored. And that, that was when the last video of this series was recorded, around that time. And I just lost all interest in trying to be friendly with her after that. Up until that point, she sort of skirted around the idea of maybe thinking that maybe there should be limits on free speech. And then all of a sudden she crossed the Rubicon, that horrible bridge into, you know what, censorship is good. And that's just, that's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Anyway, so pretty much I ignored her almost entirely. I saw no point anymore. Around this time, maybe because I ignored her, she became a lot worse and sort of desperate and started going after Tabitha, basically throwing the equivalent of online tantrums on social media against Tabitha and I, even though I wouldn't respond to her. And by the way, this is going on a few months now. She still tries to jab at me all over the place when I don't respond to her. In some cases, I couldn't even if I wanted to because I'm suspended, but you get the idea. At one point, Tapitha made a post about something. I think it was pro-capitalist, anti-communist, or whatever. And this friend argued with Tapitha in the comment section. She got more and more insulting, like never before. Like never, never before. Like just nasty. And you know, this is someone who Tapitha loves. This is a good friend of ours, okay? So this is like betrayal in a sense. But... This may be because I was ignoring her or whatever, but she got really nasty. Finally, the wolf, you know, Tabitha, lost patience with this mouse that was nipping at her paws over and over. So Tabitha made a post about something. I think it was something pro-capitalist and anti-communist. And our ex-friend there got into the comments section and had an argument with Tabitha about that, a debate. And, well, I didn't actually read it because at this point I just lost interest, but... Basically, tap of this version is that our friend got really nasty and just wouldn't stop it, got really insulting, belligerent, hateful, nasty, and so Tabitha gave her a warning over and over again to cut it out, and she just kept going. So though Tabitha told me about it, I didn't care enough to follow it or to read it in detail. I was just I was just busy being happy, you know, without dealing with this friend. That's what it was. Now this friend or ex-friend messaged me about this argument she was having with Tabitha. So then this ex-friend messaged me, private messaged me, basically saying, look, I love you, but Tabitha is bad. I love you, but Tabitha is bad, etc. You know. So I ignored her. And then she told me I was susceptible to fascism. I ignored her. Then she became racist, made racist comments towards Tabitha. I ignored her. Though that was pretty hard. She said Tabitha and I are both idiots. This is all in private messages, and I'm I'm paraphrasing because I would never actually reveal what, you know, I would never quote a private message or anything like that. Eventually I told her that there's no need to get insulting, and I reminded her that Tabitha is her own person with her own opinions, and that I'm not going to try to control what Tabitha says or thinks or anything like that. I wouldn't even want to try to dictate what opinions Tabitha could have, even if uh even if I could, and uh, believe me, I couldn't. No. Tabitha is a tough woman. She wouldn't take shit if I tried to give her shit, so that's one of the things I like about her, she's a warrior woman. She's a warrior, just like me. But anyway, our friend, who's supposed to be a feminist, you know, she basically tries to encourage me to change Tabitha's mind or change her opinion, to so basically put her in her place, okay? Tabitha will get into that later. I'll let her talk about that. Anyway, put her in her place. No, fun. If I could put Tabitha in her place, she wouldn't be the woman I love. 
and I do love her very dearly. I'm a very lucky man, dudes. I'm a very lucky man. So this ex-friend kept messaging me. I just didn't really want to even read the, the messages. At one point, I wrote to her, and I can quote because this is myself now. I, I wrote, quote, uh, okay. Well, I want to talk more about this with you, and I would, but I can't because you never actually make sense when you talk about these subjects. So what's the point? Unquote. She kept messaging me and kept commenting on stuff publicly and etc. She basically kept telling me that I had become susceptible to fascism, either because Tabitha is corrupting me, and Tabitha is bad, not just because she's the queen of my heart. No, it has nothing to do with jealousy or anything like that. It's not because Tabitha has me. Nothing to do with that. It's just that Tabitha is corrupting me, or because I have a brain tumor. She thinks. You see, I've had brain tumors in the past, so she thinks, oh, I have another brain tumor, and that's why I'm becoming fascist, or like a fascist, or whatever, you know, weasel words. You know, she, up to this point, she still used, usually, usually, not always, sometimes she said I was fascist, other times it was this plausible deniability, like, oh, I'm not saying you're a fascist or white supremacist, I'm just saying you encourage those sort of people with your videos, up to this point, okay? But we'll get, we'll get to that. But she does have this fear of me having brain tumors. I mean, this is something that's driven her to tears in the past about my, my brain condition. Because I've had two brain tumors in the past and I do get seizures and those upset her. You know, it's not like she's a, a cold hearted whatever. She is a sweet person. You know, there's always going to be a soft spot in my heart for her. And on top of this heart for her because she is dear to us both, you know. It's hard to be that intimate without, you know, keeping... A soft spot in your heart for someone you know so it's kind of dirty for her to basically try to use the whole brain tumor to try to convince me you know basically she's saying look you you don't see it because you have a brain tumor but you're becoming fascist trust me don't trust tabitha because tabitha is a white whitey white whitey white whitey racist even though tabitha is an original american enough to be an official member of the choctaw tribe but yeah she's a racist whitey white trash whitey white white honky whitey okay and she would tell me that she loves me but she's done with me i love you my friend but i don't love you anymore she told me that many times it became annoying I ignored her for the most part. Sometimes she would say that she loves Tabitha and I, and in the ser very same message, also say that we're racist idiots. <laughs> and she would say racist thing towards us while calling us racist. It's really, really just, well, basically what we come to expect from these people. Now, at one point, she flat out told me that to get away from Tabitha, and then she called me a Nazi. <laughs> So it's like somehow I'm going to be convinced that I should take her advice when she's calling me a Nazi. <laughs> She also at one point told me to delete all the photos in which Tabitha is wearing some of her clothes, and there's a lot of them. You can see some on your screen, and I think Tabitha looks really good in her clothes. Really like her taste in clothes. She has really good taste in clothes. But she told me to delete all these photos. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Maybe I should say no backsies. <laughs> But no, I ignored her. I continued to ignore her, and she eventually wrote something to the effect of, I know you're reading my messages. This is bullshit. Stop ignoring me. And still, I ignored her. And she kept messaging me. She kept cycling through the same few things over and over again, the same sort of racial slurs against Tabitha, telling me that I'm becoming fascist, telling me that it's Tabitha's fault that I'm becoming fascist, and that I can't see it because I have a brain tumor, etc. And I just ignored her. Now, at some point, Tabitha messaged her, and Tabitha gave me permission to tell you this, quote, Until you apologize for accusing him of being racist slash fascist, or whatever SJW buzzwords you parroted, with no evidence, he won't stoop low enough to talk with you again. Also, you must apologize for your racist insults, you racist, unquote. And Tabitha told her that she had better stop it, or else she would tell people her dirty little secret, now, the following is obvious to all but the regressive leftists who might be listening to this. Accusing people of being Nazis or white supremacists or whatever without having the proof, I mean proof, the sort of proof that would convince a judge in a fair trial, it is very wrong to accuse people of those things. We know why, because it gets people fired, it's gotten people divorced, it's gotten people physically attacked, kicked out of college, all without trials, by the way, without fair trials to prove anything whatsoever, all because they were accused, by the way. So that's serious stuff. You just don't go around doing that, you know, 
And we're not just talking private messages, we're talking publicly, so that's not okay. And if you don't understand that, you're probably a regressive leftist. Or just a very dogmatic ideologue. Anyway, Tabitha told her that she was the queen of gaslighting. Which is true, to be fair. She tried to gaslight Tabby and I, didn't work, but she used to do that with her boyfriend all the time. Again, the four of us lived together, and, you know, we were very comfortable around each other. You know, we can do stuff in front of each other, and it was okay. It was kind of cool, but, you know, she would fight with her boyfriend a lot and she would gaslight him like crazy and she would accuse him of doing it to her which is so not true he was he's he's a sweetheart i mean you know if you're listening to this buddy we love you tabby and i we love you I and mean, we even say that in private without recording we love you you're a great guy but she would accuse him of gaslighting and it's not something he would do while she was gaslighting him as she become she became more and more aggressive left she would try to gaslight me and tabitha as well but it's just you know it's not working anyway tabitha and this friend argue back and forth at one point she told tabitha that she must feel a thrill from doxing all those antifa people which gives you a sort of a hint about where the sex friend stands on antifa i mean if that makes her mad then she must have some sympathy with antifa but anyway tabitha didn't dox that's not what she did. Tabitha just merely found and collected public information about these people. Not, you know, most of it, what these people put on their social media, most of it is just people saying, hey, I like Antifa. Here's an Antifa flag. Here's pictures of Antifa. I like this stuff. And Tabitha just put it together in one place and shared that information with other people. It's all voluntarily. That's not doxing. That's not what doxing is. But anyway, our friends, uh, apparently she's got a soreness over that what she perceives to be Tabitha doxing all those Antif people. So anyway, Tabitha dropped a big bomb on her because she just wouldn't stop despite repeated warnings. Tabitha just let her have it. And so this ex-friend just left me alone for, I guess, a couple of months or so. Now, to reiterate, this ex-friend by this time had already been clear that she is against equality, against freedom, for censorship and she made it clear that she is a racist as well by you know saying whitey and honky and white trash to its tabitha also by this time although we haven't gotten into too much detail about this she's also been sexist and she was expressing this sexism more and more she was also devolving more and more into the typical social justice warrior npc thing of you're a fascist you're a nazi you're a white supremacist you're alt-right etc but she was leaving me alone for a while. I want to call to your attention this post right here that I made, which is, which says, quote, who has gone through something like this? I had a friend who has become racist and anti-freedom. As she descended further into that madness, she has increasingly accused me of being fascist and racist and etc. In reality, I consistently argue against racism and for freedom, yet she says I am racist and fascist. Her boyfriend is a good man, but spineless. He knows she has become anti-freedom, racist, and he knows that I am the exact opposite of what she says I am, but he refuses to deal with it. Tabitha, my wife and I, live with them, love them, laughed and cried with them, but they pretend to think that we have become racist and fascist when in reality we have become increasingly outspoken against these things. As the extensive record shows, they have chosen peer pressure and virtue signaling over true friendship and their own integrity. I have no respect for them any longer. They are weak, selfish, fearful, and lack virtue." Unquote. So you know who. Message me again. And uh, she made it clear that she was responding to me in a private message post about what I just read to you. But other than that, her message didn't really have much to... Well, it didn't really make too much sense, you see. And that was becoming an increasing issue, is her comments making less and less sense. And sometimes I just had to shake my head and just shrug and not know what she meant by this or that. But she again tried with the whole brain tumor card and the tap those leading you to the fascist white supremacy path card. And she strongly denied calling me and publicly accusing me of fascist and racist, even though she has, and expressed a mixture of some very nice things with some very nasty things. You know, I love you, but you're going, you're becoming a fascist and, you know. Now, the ex-friend had left me private messages and comments that made it clear that she watched the recent video in which I excoriate the editor of the Daily Dot, the one who 
you know, who, well, they put out this hit piece about the We the People rally before the We the People rally, saying that they're all right and all this sort of thing. And then at the We the People rally, a Jewish man was beat up by Antifa because he didn't prove to them that he was Jewish. So he must be a white supremacist because he wasn't with them. He was just at the museum or whatever that thing was. Also nearby, they jumped and beat up two Hispanic men and used racial slurs against these two men because... You know, even though they weren't, they had nothing to do with the rally, they assumed that they did, and they assumed that somehow these Hispanic men or white nationalists that had to be kicked and called wetback and other bad things. See my videos about that. Anyway, so she watched all that apparently, and she basically had a couple of insults towards me about that. She said that it was right that that guy who I spoke with on the phone in that video called me a child, or insinuated that I was a teenager, and she didn't really explain why. Then she wished me the best and told me to do as thou will. By this time, she had written that to me a number of times, do as thou will, which is either a paraphrase or maybe a misquote of do as thou wilt. The phrase is a encapsulation of a very staunchly libertarian philosophy of life called the Lima. It's, it seems absurd that someone who is against the libertarian take on things and for censorship would repeatedly use the phrase that is very libertarian, but we've come to expect such things from the regressive left, those walking contradictions who are full of fictions, you know? At one point she wrote to me that if you give a liberal a penis and a brain tumor, you get a fascist, alt-right, right-winger. Referring to me, of course. Now, some of you might at this point predict that she's going to deny calling me this, and you're right. Now, in reference to one of my recent videos about NAMBLA, she messaged me saying that I'm bad for not wanting NAMBLA to have their free speech while wanting Nazis and fascists to have their free speech, which isn't true. I want everybody to have their free speech. So anyway, we can we can see that she's at least watching some of my videos and that maybe that's a good thing ultimately, we'll see. Anyway, now this is important. She then told me quite clearly that she thinks free speech is a bad thing. Again, free speech is a bad thing, she told me. Yeah. So, this is not just so-and-so shouldn't have their free speech, which I then extrapolate to mean that she's against free speech. She said, in her own words, that she addressed it as free speech, and she said it was a bad thing. Yeah. And again, she told me that she was done messaging me. <laughs> she's told me that many times by now, and that she's done with our friendship. But she loves me, but she doesn't love me, but she loves me, and she reiterates how much she cherishes and appreciates me, and again, do as thou will, and she wishes me luck, and 15 minutes later, message me again telling me that my white trash girlfriend, or wait, white trash thought girlfriend now, my white trash thought girlfriend, you know, Tabitha, my wife actually, to go fuck ourselves. And all this time, I just didn't answer, I just... I, you know, and I wasn't even reading this stuff most of the time. It was sort of, it would build up for weeks, and then I would kind of read some of it, and then it would build up for weeks, and I'd read some more, but it kept on going. And, you know, basically, I'm not going to describe anymore, because it's the same, you know, it's predictable stuff. By now, you get the idea. All right, folks, we'll see your next and last video about our attempts to understand the twisted mind of our ex-friend who is swept away in this madness and thereby understand this phenomena in regressive leftists and SJWs in general. And I promise the next one, the last one, will have a lot of tabby in it. And a little bit more of... And it may have to be a bit shoot only video. It may be too controversial for YouTube. Too much controversy. So be sure to subscribe to us on BitChute. See the first link below. Thanks, people. Till next time, peace, truth, justice, mercy, strength, honor, liberty, laughter, and love. Thanks, everyone. And don't forget to subscribe.